Hello friends, this video on anatomy of flowering plants part 3 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now let us see where do we find the meristematic tissues. So now we understood what are meristematic tissues. Let us try to see where do we see them. Now based on which region of the plant meristematic tissues are found, they are classified into three types. Now there are various reg regions in a plant where the meristematic tissues can be found. So based on that they are classified into three types. What are the three types? Epical meristem, intercalary meristem and lateral meristem or cambium. So these are the three types of meristematic tissues based on the location where they are found. Now as I mentioned in one of the previous slides that this apical meristem and intercalary meristem they are called primary meristem whereas lateral meristem is known as secondary meristem. So now you might wonder what is primary meristem and what is secondary meristem. Now primary meristem is that meristem. meristem. Meristem word is basically shortened form of meristematic tissue. Now primary meristem generally appear early in the life of a plant. So it forms the primary plant body. Whereas when I talk about the secondary meristem, it occurs in the mature regions and it appear in the later life of a plant. Right? And that is why the name primary and secondary. So primary appears in the early life of plant. Secondary appears in the later life or when after maturity. Secondary meristem is found. Right? So now let us understand each type of meristem. So to start with, what is apical meristem? As the name suggests, apical meristem. The term apical is derived from the term apex. Apex is nothing but tip, tip of anything. Correct? So the meristem which is present at the tip. So it is present in root and stem tips. So as a result of this meristem, what happens? The root and stem length increases. Now basically, as I said, that meristematic tissues or the meristems are basically the region of actively dividing cells. So more and more new cells will be formed. Now when so many cells are formed, what will happen? The length will increase here in this case. So now it is present in the root and stem tips. Now these types. Apical meristem again is of two types. One is root apical meristem and the other one is shoot apical meristem. This is shoot apical meristem and this is root apical meristem. Now what happens here you, in this case you can see at the tips of the roots these meristems are present. So more and more cells will be new cells will be formed. So this will increase in length like this. Similarly, at the tip of the shoot, so because of which it will keep on increasing in length. Correct? Now, it so happens that in case of shoot apical meristem, the stem length keep on increasing, but there are some cells which are left out. These left out cells form the axillary bud. And this axillary bud later forms branches and flowers. Like from the shoot, you would have seen that branches come out and there you can also see flowers so now these branches and flowers are formed by the axillary bud, right? And what is this axillary bud? That is nothing but a part of apical meristem only. Some of the cells of the apical meristem, the newly formed cells, some of those cells give rise to branches and flowers. So this is apical meristem. So next is intercalary meristem. Now why is it called intercalary? Because they are present at the internodes. You remember what is node and what is internode, right? So these points from where the leaves are formed, that they are nodes. Whereas this region between two nodes is known as internodes. So basically this is node, this portion is internode, again this is 
node correct so th these are so these meristem are present in the inter nodes that is the a region between two consecutive nodes so they are present at the base of leaves and inter nodes of twigs so leaf base as well as inter nodes of twigs now stem regions between the places at which leaves attach so basically this portion so that is why they are called intercalary meristem because even that every portion has to grow right so whichever portion we want to grow we basically want new cells to be formed there so how do the new cells form they are formed by the meristematic tissue and now the third type of meristem that is the lateral meristem which is also known as cambium now this type of meristem helps in increasing the root or stem girth what is girth girth is nothing but the thickness now whenever a plant grows does it grow only in height does it grow only in length no right the length increases and simultaneously the width also increases if you look at a very small plant say a small plant something like this so width of this and width of this there is a huge difference right so now but how do you reach from this stage to this stage with growth so when you plant a small plant what happens the stem is very thin now as that plant keeps on growing when it becomes a huge tree the same stem becomes a thick very very thick bark right so this increase in thickness is taken care by lateral meristem right now this lateral meristem again is of two types vascular cambium and cork cambium so cork cambium is nothing but bark so that is a non scientific term which is used for cork cambium that is the bark of the tree when i say vascular cambium in vascular cambium we will talk about xylem phloem we will talk about the vascular bundles there so we will not let's not talk about that right away because we will be talking about it in very much detail because there are a lot of things to understand when we talk about vascular cambium and cork cambium so for now, now you got a fair idea that what a meristematic tissue tissues which actively divide why do they divide because of their characteristics that is they have small cells they have thin cell walls they have dense cytoplasm large nuclei no vacuole so all these properties support them to divide actively and to produce many many new cells now talking about the types of meristematic tissues they are of two types primary meristematic tissue and secondary so primary meristems are those which are present in the early life of a plant secondary are those which comes later in the life of a plant that is after maturity now in primary meristem again we have two types apical meristem and intercalary apical meristem are responsible for increase in length of the plant now one more thing to be noted here is just now i spoke about apical meristem right now have you ever observed one thing at your house that if you uproot suppose you have a plant in a pot you uproot that plant so take it out completely from the soil and then plant it in a different pot now many a times you would have observed that the plant dies so why does that happen that's because sometimes during uprooting that plant you are not able to uproot it completely along with it root along with its root tips so what happens is if the root tip is not carried with it to the new pot in that case you are basically missing out the root apical meristem and if the root apical meristem is missing your root will not increase in length and if the root is not increasing in length the grip of the plant on the new pot will not be that great and as a result the plant dies in some time so whenever you uproot a plant make sure that the root tips are intact because root tips are the places where the root apical meristem lies similarly make sure that the shoot tip is fine because there again you have the shoot apical meristem and these apical meristem helps in increasing the length of the plant 
right okay so with this discussion on meristematic tissues i think we can now talk about permanent tissues now before that i just forgot to show you this slide on vascular cambium and cork cambium i was talking about cork cambium that is the bark now if you look at the cross section of this tree so this is how the bark would look like so cork cambium is the outermost part that is the is present almost in the outer layers so you can see there are many layers which you can see here i'll talk about this exact structure in detail later but vascular cambium is present towards the interior whereas cord cambium is one of the outermost layers which later forms the bark thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos attempt free online test get free study material find tutors and mentors thank you once again